Hello and welcome back to another video today here again on Gran Turismo to look at the fifth and final new edition in December's free update, which is this Bugatti Chiron. It's available from Brand Central for 3 million credits, making it by far the most expensive car in this update, and is available in eight colours, most of them two-tone. So there's the light blue and black carbon fibre, red and black paint, yellow and black paint, that, which is horrible, that always looks funny with the white that way around, so I think it's got to be probably one of these. To be a bit different, I'm going to go for the yellow, I think. With the next most expensive car being the Ferrari Vision Gran Turismo, which costs a million credits, although given you were given it if you got one of the questions in the viewers' campaign right, um, it was actually a free car for a lot of us. Or taking a look at any of the other cars from this update, I have already uploaded videos taking a closer look at all of those, which are up on my channel if you want to check those out in more detail. So, as with the Courgette we took a first drive in the other day, there isn't really much to say about the Chiron. We all know this car by now. It's ridiculously powerful with a stupidly large W16 engine, which is quad turbocharged, producing 1,479 horsepower. That, coupled with a fancy all-wheel drive system, makes it incredibly fast, in a straight line at least. But it also makes it incredibly heavy at 1,995 kilos, so it doesn't seem to like corners all that much, meaning it only really does one thing, the same as the Veyron that came before it, to be honest, just goes in a straight line very quickly. As you may be able to tell, I'm not really a huge fan of modern Bugattis. I think both the Veyron and Chiron are hugely overhyped and overrated, particularly the Veyron, because it was the first, um, seems to get overhyped so, so much, I think. They only really serve one purpose. They're ridiculously expensive, and personally, I think both of them are quite ugly. I know a lot of people say the Chiron is a lot better looking than the Veyron, and it is, but I still don't like it. Um, although, yeah, it is quite impressive, but like I say, only in a straight line. As soon as you show it a corner, as you're seeing here, it just wants to plough straight on. So, yeah, it's not the most fun thing to drive around a circuit like this. It's incredibly good at going very fast on the autobahn, but that's about it. Anyway, for those of you who haven't unsubscribed after that controversial opinion that I don't like Bugattis, I'm now going to show you through the customization options. Which, as you might expect on a car this kind of valuable and high-end, there aren't all that many customization options. There's no wide body, for example, which is an option on almost every car in Gran Turismo. There are limited um, custom parts. We have two front lip options. I am going to put Type B on, and one side skirt option, which I will put on. Um, there's no rear diffusers. The wing only allows a custom wing set, which looks horrendous, particularly as it's on a bit of active aero already, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> And then there's your usual racing items, which again, I don't think really look right on a Bugatti. Um, you can, of course, change the light bulbs, but they're already a pretty nice, cool colour. And number plates, well, you can add some to the front if you want to ruin the look of the front of your already ugly Bugatti even more. Or you can write Bu um, Bugatti, you can write Gran Turismo instead of Bugatti, if you want. So I'm not going to do that either. So, I've bought several Bugatti colours. I'm just hoping when I do this, it's there's going to be an option to paint um, the other bit. Just the, the middle bit. Ooh, actually, I'll tell you what. Carbon looks really good on here. That actually looks kind of cool. Hang on, I'm going to try something. If I do that, can I then... No, if you do carbon, you can't then. Due to the unique way this game works. Right. Anyway, the colours I've bought are... Red M, which I think looks pretty cool. Matte Green, um, which I'm not going to do. I just wanted to show you that this was an option. The other thing we have to keep in mind is whatever colour you paint it, it remains with a blue interior. So we have to kind of pick something that matches that. So I have got a couple of blues. There's light blue, which I think was one of the two-tone colours available. Part of it was this colour from the manufacturer. I've got blue M, which... I think M's metallic, by the way. So we've got red and blue. Um, this is interesting. And, well, this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try... I just want to test something. 
if we go with blue and then go on body two no not body two other oh interesting so other is the c shape not i mean yellow is cool but i think that's a bit too much gold no i was thinking more because the yellow i thought I think with the bright blue interior was a bit too much so maybe we should yeah maybe we should be doing blue with light blue what do you reckon there's something a bit different i'm gonna do it do you know what i actually kind of like that with the blue on the wheels i'm gonna do it so, having already said that I kind of dislike this car, having spent three million credits on it, um, I now get to the point in the video where I tell you it's not really very useful in the world of Gran Turismo. Partly because it doesn't handle very well, but partly because it's already at 706 performance points, so the only thing you can really tune it to get it in, unless you make it worse by maybe putting it on worse tyres, is going to be things like this and this for racing cars which it's never going to be competitive in. So I'm going to see if we can drop the performance points to 700, I think, rather than upgrading it. So with the help of a fully customizable computer and a power restrictor, I've brought the power down to 807, which then allowed me to get quite a lot of other parts in. For example, weight reduction, sports medium tires, more weight reduction, height adjustable sports suspension, more weight reduction, racing brake pads and discs, racing clutch, and more weight reduction. So with full weight reduction, it's down to 1,436 kilos, so it's still quite heavy, but it's now running 807 horsepower. I feel like that's maybe a better balance for racing and track usage. And then the problem you find is that the only 700 category races for road cars are the American Clubman Cup restricted to American cars. All the other ones are World Touring Car, which if I find one, is either 600 and road cars, or 700 and effectively GT4 category cars, which I don't think this is ever going to beat. So despite not being great in the corners, here at Deep Forest the straights were long enough for it to well, keep up and overtake a lot of the touring cars, a bit like the Celica did when we did the same race around here in that uh, a couple of videos ago here on Gran Turismo. But unfortunately, the car's so heavy that the fuel didn't last long enough. So usually this is a one-stop race, in which case I would have been fine. At one point I was up to fourth, for example. Um, but the Bugatti burned through fuel so quickly, even on the leanest setting, that you couldn't make it through this race without two pit stops, at which point you weren't really in competition at all, so you end up finishing somewhere in the middle of the pack, although it was the fastest car around here getting fastest lap. So given that didn't go all that well, and there aren't many other races to do, I think I've kind of concluded the Bugatti isn't a car for going around a track, which we kind of already knew. So what I'm going to do instead is, well, max it out and see what top speed it can hit, as that's kind of what it's intended to do. We all know what it's capable of, when it's stock so yeah i thought i'd max it out have a bit of fun see what it could do so we've now got better turbochargers um intercoolers exhausts brakes back on suspension more weight reduction racing softs it now has 1700 horsepower um but still weighs 1400 kilos which is what it weighed before i'd already fully weight reductioned it um so yeah let's see what it can do so with just the upgrades but no tuning to the gearbox, it was slightly gear limited, but on the downhill section of Special Stage Route X, it did manage 283 miles an hour. So initially I just set the gearing all the way to top speed with a theoretical top speed of 800 kilometers an hour, um, but obviously that didn't work, the gears were way too long so it would never have actually got there. So after a bit of fine tuning, I managed to get the gearing somewhere in the middle um, with a theoretical top speed of 600 kilometers an hour, at which point it hit 288 miles an hour on the downhill, hitting our previous record of 283 back on the flat part of the track. I did then try it with the gearing set to an even lower theoretical top speed, um, but it wasn't any faster. In fact, it was, I think, one mile an hour slower. 
So I think maybe with some fine tuning you could get it to hit 290, but it's not going to do any more than that, I don't think, at least around that circuit. If you had one that was purely downhill maybe, but that doesn't exist in Gran Turismo. So yeah, it's pretty fast in a straight line, as we kind of thought with Bugattis, but not great at anything else. And that is going to do it for a very first look at the Bugatti Chiron from the latest December free update here on Gran Turismo 7. And that's in fact the last car to take a look at from this update, having taken a look at the previous four already. So do go and check out the videos of those if you're interested in the other cars from this update. And I kind of look forward to seeing what's in store for us in January's free update. Hopefully um, five cars again, or four cars on a circuit maybe. Um, but yeah. For a first look at the Bugatti Chiron, that is going to be all. Um, very quick in a straight line, as we knew from stock and upgraded. Not going to be great round the circuit. Understeer is ridiculously heavy from standard, and you can't get enough weight out of it for it to be competitive here on the game. But yeah, it's a fun car to go very fast in a straight line in, which in the end is what they're designed for. I know personally I don't like them that much, but it's still a cool car to have in the garage, even though it did cost rather a lot and won't be used in any races. But there we go. That is going to do it for a first look at the Bugatti Chiron. I very much look forward to seeing what cars come in the next update. But for now, that's going to be all. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll be back with the next video very soon. Mm -hmm.